Hello and good evening. First tonight, there are calls for urgent action after yet another cyclist was killed in London. The woman, who's not yet been identified, was involved in a collision with a lorry on a cycle superhighway in East London during this morning's rush hour. Four cyclists have now been killed on the capital's roads in the last eight days. It brings the total number of bike deaths in London this year to 12. And at the Bow Roundabout, where this latest tragedy happened, it's the third death in two years. That's where we can join our transport correspondent, Tom Edwards, this evening. Tom. Yeah, there's a lot of anger here and there's a lot of frustration. This is a vigil by cyclists. They want changes to Bow Roundabout immediately. They say the risk of now using it is totally unacceptable. Locals call Bow Roundabout a death trap. This morning in rush hour, another cyclist died here. She's the third cycling fatality on this roundabout. She'd been using the Mayor's Cycle Superhighway 2. Again, it involved a left-turning HGV. The widow of cyclist Brian Dawling, who died at Bow, said she's appalled. One cyclist is bad enough, but four is carnage on our streets. Um, something has to be done, and something has to be done about Bow roundabout. I know that the, the side that Brian died has now been segregated, um, but I would recommend that no cyclist goes across that roundabout on a bicycle. This is the segregated section of Cycle Superhighway 2, and it was opened just last week by the mayor. And it encourages cyclists to use this very busy roundabout. If you look on the railings just here, you'll see flowers have been left to a cyclist who died also on this roundabout two years ago. The latest fatality took place on this slip road, again involving a left-turning HGV. Four cyclists have died in eight days in London, all involve collisions with large vehicles. A number of cyclists have also been seriously injured, like here this morning on Millbank. At Bow, campaigners say these new lights, designed to give cyclists a head start, are confusing. We've expressed our concerns about the what's called the new layout, the early start. It doesn't give complete protection for cyclists. That's obvious. Uh, it needs to be rethought and proper protection being put in for cyclists and for pedestrians. Record numbers are cycling in London, but safety remains a concern. Transport for London says it's investing millions in segregated junctions and routes, and cycling is safe. But in Bow, many cyclists avoid TfL's improvements and prefer the flyover. Raza Alipour lives nearby. He saw the aftermath of one of the deaths. He's now sold his bike. Between a Stratford and my land, it's not safe. Maybe if you go to Westminster, it's too safe. I really don't know. Because, because in this area, there are too many lorries. Again, there are calls for a rush hour ban on HGVs. Again, the mayor's political opponents say he should stop encouraging cyclists to use this route. Again, there's pressure on the mayor to make improvements much more quickly. And Tom, this route that you referred to, um, you know, one of the mayor's flagship cycling superhighways, which a coroner last month described as an accident waiting to happen. Uh, what has the mayor had to say? Well, the mayor says that change is happening, but it will take some time. He's been speaking to our political editor, Tim Donovan. Clearly, one death is, is one too many in London on our roads, on our, on our, our cycle superhighways, and uh, our thoughts are very much with the, the families of those who've been bereaved in the last few days. If you look at the number of deaths that we are sustaining in the city from cycling, uh, of, of cyclists, uh, they are down on where they were five years ago. They're actually down on, uh, you know, quite considerably as a, as a, as a percentage. Uh, and yet we've seen a massive increase in the number of cyclists. Is this not now time to scrap this CS2 at this route altogether? The dangers are just too great. Well, what you, no, I don't think so at all. I think, I think it is very important to continue with the Cycle Superhighway programme, to continue to, to roll that out, to continue to make cycling uh, ever safer, to continue to invest in in cycles. And if we can look, you know, we'll see what happened at uh, the Bow Roundabout. We'll analyse it. There, there's no traffic engineer in the world uh, who can uh, ca accommodate every eventuality. 
But isn't the evidence just like sort of, you know, mounting up now? It shows that it was a folly to introduce this highway at this roundabout in the first place. Well, I, I, again, I think we need to look at what has happened before we draw that conclusion. You have uh, cut corners on safety. You went ahead too quickly with these no, routes. I think, uh, on the uh, you went to, you know, they were too cheap. No, I think you could argue, if you look at, if you look at what's happened, uh, that our interventions to make cycling safer are steadily working. Are you going to get rid of this cycle superhighway or divert it away from this roundabout? No, we're, we're not going to get rid of, uh, of, of CS2. Uh, but obviously what we are doing and what has been long part of the, uh, of the cycling vision is we are going to be having, we are going to have a load of, of quiet ways as well. Would you accept these last few days as, you know, there are crisis emerging here? I, you know, every death in London streets is one too many. Uh, I am very, very... Uh, proud of our record on, on cycling and we're determined to make the investments in London's roads that will make it ever safer. Now let's speak to the cycling blogger and campaigner Mark Ames. Mark, what do you make of what's happened over the last week? Four deaths in eight days. It's been absolute carnage on London's roads, but this is not a unique problem. In fact, 80 cyclists uh, have died since Boris came to power, most of them under the wheels of heavy goods vehicles. We know what the problems are with lorries, we know what the problems are with specific killer junctions, and nothing's being done. What is the answer then? We need proper space for cycling on main roads, we need separated Dutch-style cycle lanes, and we need Boris and his cycling commissioner and Transport for London to really get on with it. To be fair, the commissioner and the mayor says they are investing in that kind of infrastructure. Is it the pace of change that's the issue? Absolutely. Four people have died in London this week. Many more have been seriously injured. The change just isn't coming fast enough. That's why people like the London Cycling Campaign, like me, like all these hundreds of people, are here and they're protesting. People are really, really angry. Okay. As you heard there, a lot of anger here, but from Bo, the vigil starts now. Back to you, Chris. Tom, from Bo, thank you. Our transport correspondent, Tom Edwards. Now, we heard earlier about concerns over cycling safety in the capital. Well, today it's been revealed that one person a day has been killed or seriously injured in incidents involving London buses in the past five years. Now, the Conservatives on the London Assembly want Transport for London to publish detailed information on the worst performing bus routes and accident hotspots. But TfL say the collisions are falling. Warren Nettleford has more. It's the country's busiest shopping street, and Oxford Street is also one of the country's busiest bus routes. 270 of them travel along here during peak hours, and that's after Transport for London reduced numbers by 20%. Tom Kearney was on Oxford Street when he was struck by a bus, and he suffered serious injuries. The impact burst both my lungs, cracked my head open, and threw me 20 feet down the street. In the last five years, more than 1,800 people have been killed or seriously injured by buses in London. In the last financial year, there were 359 incidents. In 2009, 441. Tom hasn't tried to get compensation, but he wants TfL to do more to improve safety. TfL doesn't care. They clearly don't get prosecuted for it. So why not cram as many buses you can next to the most amount of people on foot you'll have in London? And the result, you have deaths, you have serious injuries. With so many buses going up and down, and uh, there, there are the jams that occur. And... The Conservatives on the London Assembly who wrote the report say that TfL need to release more information, like where the hotspots are and which routes are the worst performers. If TfL were to print the figures for each borough for every quarter, then, you know, you'll be able to see where the problems were. If they print the hot spots, you'll be able to see. And it then leads you on to finding some solutions, which is what's desperately needed by everybody in London. TfL point out, though, that fatalities have fallen by 60% since 2008. We have to keep them in context and bear in mind that, you know, the London bus network is a very large bus network, one of the largest in the world. Over six million people travel on it every day. Uh, and the figure's are actually very low. These passengers account for something like 25% uh, of, of trips on the road network every day, yet only 6% of the injuries. TfL say they'll release more detailed information on bus safety in April next year. Warren Nettleford, BBC London News. Thank you very much. 
A quick reminder of tonight's main news. The Governor of the Bank of England, Mark Carney, says the recovery is finally beginning to take hold. The bank has upgraded its growth forecast for the UK for this year from 1.4% to 1.6%. And there are calls tonight for urgent action after another cyclist was killed on London's roads. It's the fourth in eight days. That's it. Thanks for joining us. Plenty more on our website and we'll be back at 10. Until then, whatever you're doing, do have a lovely evening. Bye-bye.